Hey everybody, I just want to say welcome to our venue virtual experience. You can clap in front of your laptop if you like. I'm, I'm so glad that you're here. Um, we are uh, just experimenting in our studio right now, so I want to say a huge thank you to the Dream Team for doing that. Hey, um, I'm a hugger, so this whole COVID-19 thing is hard on me. So just imagine a virtual hug from your pastor. Not a creepy one, just a virtual hug. I think that this whole two meters of separation thing, uh, I think it's, it's hurting our feelings a little bit, but we're made to connect. But we're going to connect you virtually here. And uh, you are made for two things, to connect with God and to connect with people. So I'm glad that you joined us here today. Hey, um, just for the future, VenueChurch.ca is where everything is going to connect. So you're going to go there for your uh, virtual kids. Um, experiences right now those aren't aren't happening live you can pick them up a few minutes late and it's perfect for your kids hey listen I want you to send a virtual invite right now can you just stop I'll just wait here for you to stop and invite your family in Nigeria to join us right now to send them a virtual invite to pick this service up you can actually chat with them as the service is going on, we just uh, pray that you would uh, worship when it's time to worship, respect the word of God as we move forward in this. But um, I'll wait for you to send somebody an invite because look, somebody needs hope in this thing right now. Somebody needs hope in their lives and you are the invitee that's gonna bring that to them. So um, go ahead, I'll wait. All right, we have Facebook watch parties happening as well whenever the service times are running. Um, there are virtual groups that you can belong to no matter where you are in the world right now. Venue Church, you can belong to a virtual. You can be in my small group if you want to. So there's links in right in where you're watching this right now. There's links right there to groups, to kids, to the watch party. Uh, you might have to go to the website for that. I'm not sure what's going on. I have handlers who just hand me stuff and tell me what's happening. But thank God for an amazing team here. Um, also, if you want to, from afar, you can join a venue, uh, a dream team from afar. And so you can help people in this time of, of need. Also, another exciting thing is we have a, a brand new two-day-old uh, uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so if you could just, just go and subscribe to it right now called The Venue and subscribe to it right now. We're going to give hope to some people in a different way. All right, here's our attitude today. I said, nothing is canceled. Church is not canceled. It's all online. It's available online. We're doing, um, right now we're doing, uh, what, are, what are those things called? We're doing groups by Zoom. So that's, uh, we actually get to see face-to-face to face our small groups. We, are, we tried it this week. We, we actually had more people in groups, I think, this week than we normally do. And so uh, we can be more connected uh, than ever before. And, um, and that's going to be incredible. So also keep in mind that when you're on Zoom, other people can see you. So sooner or later, I'm going to pick my nose on there. And if you get a screenshot of it, just put it online. That's fine. I'm, I'm totally okay. Never before have I been more able to embarrass myself. All right. Let's get to our worship experience right now. We're glad you joined us wherever you're joining us. Matthew 6 says this. this is, these are the words of Jesus. How many people know that you need the words of Jesus right now? There's so many voices out there and so much white noise, but that's not what matters right now. You need the voice of Jesus. This is what he says. Here's what I want you to do. This is coming from our Lord Jesus. Find a quiet, secluded place, which is everybody's home right now. Maybe for the first time in a long time, you haven't been distracted by a whole lot of things. But he says, find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. And then he says this, just be there as simply and as honestly as you can manage, and the focus will shift from you to God. I want to key on that today. From you to God, and you will begin to sense His grace. How many people know that you need the grace of God right now? His grace is power in time of need. His grace is what resurrected Jesus from the from the grave. His grace is what will get us through this crisis in a better place spiritually than we have ever been it will shift from you to him and you will begin to sense his grace. I want you, even if you're in front of a laptop or on your device somewhere, in your home likely, I want you to develop new kinds of worship. God is the most creative being that there is. We're going to do just a couple of songs of worship. We're going to do one song, then I'm going to get right into it, and then we're going to end with a song. But I want you to develop new kinds of worship. So you don't, I mean, get the tambourine out if you need to at home, if you know what that is. That's an old church thing that we outlawed uh, for good reason. But... Um, 
get the tambourine out or tap your fingers or worship. Sometimes you don't have to sing to worship if you're there with other people. Just develop new ways of doing that. I watch videos, music videos sometimes, and I worship in my heart to God. So get your kids rolling on their venue virtual groups. You can do it after the service as well. Uh, get signed up to a small group today. But let's do a song that we're just learning now called Sea of Victory by Elevation.
I should have been a drummer. I feel like I would have been a great drummer. I would have been a loud drummer. All right. Let me start right into where I think God wants to speak to you today. I don't know where you are, and I don't know how you're feeling, but uh, this is how God is feeling about you. You ready? This is what he's thinking about you. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. I was reading the prophet Jeremiah this morning in the, like the blood and the thunder. And I have a word uh, coming for you from the Holy Spirit that's going to, I think, give you perspective in this moment. I just got to work you into it a little bit. Jeremiah 29 says this, I know the thoughts, this is what God is saying to you, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Sometimes we're like, God, what about the thoughts I think about you? And God's like, that's, God, what about the thoughts I think about me? And God's like, no, 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 no. I know the thoughts I think about you. Listen, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and to give you a hope. I wanted to ask you that now that you know what God thinks, let me ask you, like, what are you thinking right now? What are you feeling right now? I mean, really, dig down. I mean, you can get into the chat right now. Just type a word in there. Describe where this is landing on you. I don't know if you're self-isolating in your home right now. I, I don't know if you're lonely. I don't know if you're afraid. You might be all of them. Type a word in. Sometimes you got to just type a word into the chat and, and get it out in the open. Um, it's it's a, a shock to smart people. Anybody out there think that they're smart? I know that you do. If you're Canadian, I know that you think that you're smart. But it's a shock to smart people's uh, systems when something happens that we didn't see coming or that you didn't see coming. I'm not sure if I'm a smart person or not. I married a smart person and I have smart people in my home. I don't know if that makes me smart by osmosis, but it's a shock to smart people when we don't see something coming. But listen, listen, fear is not what we think of when we think of smart people problems. We don't think that fear is like fear is for people who are not smart. I'm smart. I could see it coming. This is a double whammy for you if you think that you're smart because it landed on you. You didn't see it coming. You weren't prepared for it. We weren't prepared for it. And then the message that we tend to internalize right now is maybe something you're internalizing that, hey, you're helpless and you're stupid. <laughs> like, you can't do anything about this and you're dumb because you didn't see it coming. I'm, I'm telling you, maybe what it is that you're feeling right now. It's a little bit of what I'm feeling right now. But I want to say that fear is one of those funny things. I feel like we got a lot of smoke in the studio right now. Is that, is that what's happening? Um, thanks, Jen. Appreciate that. I, I'll preach the rest, I think, without music. We're just kind of figuring this out, so... We're glad you joined us. You are our test tube people. Um, thank you for joining us, studio. Say thank you to everybody. All right. Um, here's what I was thinking. Here's what I was thinking. Fear is not one of those things. Listen, you can't outthink fear. You can't, out, you can't think your way out of fear. But this is how we deal with fear, and this is how I want to just put something in your hearts and in your minds today, is that King David said, Yea, though I walk through, in Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, why did he say that? Like, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because I'm smart and I can outthink this and that smoke machine is still running. I'm super distracted right now. No? Okay. Okay. Um, Yea, though I walk through the valley, you can laugh at that studio audience because everybody thinks that I'm giving somebody heck and I'm just wondering why this movie is. All right. Um, I will fear no evil because you are with me. Listen, here's what I want you to think about today. Listen, your smarts don't help with fear, only who you're with. David said, I will fear no evil for you are with me, God. David had more reason to fear in his life than you could possibly imagine, I think. The time that he grew, he used to live in a cave, everybody. He was worried that, I mean, he ran for his life from Saul for years. You have to understand, he's speaking from a deep place of having had to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And this is God's word to you. It doesn't make, you can't outthink your way out of fear. It's who you're with. And I hope that this thing will be an opportunity that you will come and meet with God so that your fears can be dealt with. Fear says this, keep me a secret. But God says, tell me about it. 
Fear says, keep me a secret. I'm just going to be your little private. You don't have to tell anybody about it. But when you get a little oxygen on it, it starts to lose its power over you. And God says, why don't you talk about it? Why don't you get in a venue, virtual group that we run? You can click the link right there in the chats, wherever you are. Join a group. You need the help of the people of God to help you through this fear. Listen, some of you ought to be afraid. Some of us ought to be afraid. I, I know you're afraid of losing your businesses right now. I, I know that. I know some of you. You're in my small group. I get it. I know that you're afraid right now of going into debt right now because you, some of us are getting laid off. We, we don't have a future. We didn't plan ahead for this. Some of us are afraid we might lose our marriages because, look, it was hard enough before. Come on. It was hard enough before, and now this is going on? Oh, my. We're thinking, God, what am I going to do? Some of us are getting discouraged, and some of us are getting addicted because we got too much time on our hands and nothing productive to do, and we have this thing called the Internet. Well, why don't we redeem some of the Internet? Use it to channel the Holy Spirit of God into our homes and use it to connect like never before. But, hey, you won't find all the courage you need inside yourself right now. God's promises work every single time, but a lot of his promises are conditional on what you do, and you need a church family around you to remind you. All right, here's the main portion of my sermon today. I'm going to be talking about a time of famine that uh, a man named Isaac, you remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a man named Isaac was uh, experiencing a time of famine. So this could be a, a famine time for you. I'm, I'm telling you, my sermon is titled, Crisis Equals Opportunity. Christ, I got zero feedback from the studio. Crisis <laughs> equals opportunity. Awesome. Crisis equals opportunity. If you're God. If you're us, crisis equals a whole lot of panic. And then God, our Father, walks into the room while we're hyperventilating. And he's like, hey, relax. I got a plan for this. I got a plan for your life. I got a plan for your family. I got a plan for your finances. I got a plan. My promises always come to you. All right, ready? Yeah. Genesis chapter 26. A severe famine now struck the land as had happened before in Abraham's time. It says, so Isaac moved to Gerar, where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. So I think the first thing you need to take out of that is a severe famine struck, as had happened before. As had happened. Just because this is the first time it's happened to you doesn't mean it's the first time it's happened. My grandfather... The famine in the Ukraine that the Dutch Mennonites experienced in a time of war, yep. come on, yep. drove him to this country, drove him to faith. His, uh, his brother was sent out with a bag full of money to buy food, and all he, could, all he could buy with an entire bag full of money was one rooster. So if you've got a bag full of money, I will give you a whole bunch of roosters right now. But listen, just because it's the first time it's happened to you, it doesn't mean it's the first time it's ever happened before. God has always spoken promises to people in time of famine. You have to understand that Isaac is like, this had happened in my father's time. What did my father do? What did my father do? The Lord appeared to Isaac and says, do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. So what he's saying right now, and I, I feel like he's saying it to somebody out there, is don't panic, don't leave. Just do what I tell you to do. That's what God is saying. Don't panic. Don't leave. Just do what I tell you to do. Don't, I mean, I'm not an investment guru, but probably don't jump off the roller coaster right now. Probably don't move to Belize right now. <laughs> Chad, I'm looking at Chad right now. We're all maintaining two meters of distance, just for the record. Listen, just don't do anything drastic right now. He's saying, stay here and do what I tell you to do. That's what God is saying. Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. Remember David? He's saying, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And God is saying, stay in the land, and I will develop something in you, for you are with me. Um, I will be with you and bless you. I, will, I hereby confirm that I will give all these lands to you and your descendants, just as I have solemnly promised Abraham your father. I will cause your descendants to become as numerous as the stars of the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your descendants, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. And it says this, so Isaac stayed in Gerar. Verse 12, when Isaac planted, you ready? This is God's word to somebody. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted. Wow. 
100-fold crop back then. Back then, everybody. 100 times what he planted in the land of famine. It says, for the Lord blessed him. When God's blessing is on your life, there is a higher economy than the one that you live in. There, when God touches your life, there is no, nothing that can stop his blessings on your life. I'm not saying you're going to be rich and drive a Corvette. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is you can be blessed and you can have bread and you can have more than enough to eat for your family. And then it says something very interesting here. And I would ask you, would you have the faith to join with me today? That maybe in this time of famine, maybe we don't close up. Maybe we don't get afraid and selfish because you can in times of famine. I think there's a word from God here like, would you be willing to sow in a time of famine? I'm just asking. I'm just asking because you can stay at home and eat your seed. But then you're going to be hungry tomorrow. And if you would give some of that seed to God, is he talking about money? Oh, my goodness, the preacher is talking about money. Well, I'm talking a little bit about money. I'm saying the seed of your life, the first fruits of your life and your time and your energy. And look, you have been using this on yourself. We've been using this on ourselves in Canada. We have to understand that the first was supposed to go back to God from whom all blessings flowed in the first place. He reopened, get this, the wells his father had dug, which the Philistines had filled in after Abraham's death. Isaac also restored the names Abraham had given them. There needs to come, see, our country was founded on biblical principles, founded on the cross and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was founded initially on these precepts, on the character of God, on the morality of God. It was founded there. Maybe it's time for us to, in, in our country, in your country, maybe it's time for us to redig those wells that our fathers dug in the first place. It says the Philistines, the enemies of your soul, the distractions, all those things that sometimes God blesses us. And, and here's what I would say to you. This was a common theme in Israel. So Israel would do okay. God would bless them, give, take them out of captivity, put them in a land, give them peace. They would start doing well. And then they would forget about God and start worshiping this stuff. And the distractions, and, they would, and then they would start mixing the worship of Yahweh in with the worship of other gods, and the economy, and wow. sex. And, yeah. Yeah. But what you need to understand is then, then the, the time would become right, because they would come and get invaded, and something would take them over and take them back to their land for a little while, and they would suffer for a little while. Or there would be a famine come to the land, and then that famine, those, those who saw what was going on, the famine drove them back to the Lord their God. And when it drove them back to the Lord their God, then God would send a deliverer and save them. And I feel like God wants to do that for you. It's an old pattern that has been going on and on and on in the world. I, I got to preach the next little part here that's going to hurt your feelings a little bit. But listen, you're hurt enough. Um... Part of my job sometimes as a spiritual leader is, I got to tell you sometimes, because some of us, and maybe I'm talking to you, if God would give you a Band-Aid, you'd keep the cancer and just be okay. And if God would make all of this go away next week, you'd go back right to life the way that it was. But I'm telling you right now, this is the biggest opportunity that you have ever had in your life. For God to cut the cancer of selfishness out of your life. For God to cut the cancer of self. And this is our family. And this is all that we care about. And all I care about is what the vehicle I drive. And I can be addicted to this. And I can be. And I, I don't have to honor God. I don't have to do that. That's what my grandfather did. But that was we've evolved past them. I, I think we've devolved maybe a little bit rather than evolved past that. Maybe it's time to redig the wells with me. Let's get cancer free. Look, my job sometimes as a spiritual leader is just to let's do a little bit of surgery in our hearts this morning because I, I, feel, like, I feel like we're diagnosing the symptoms, but let's get down to the, maybe the root of the problem. Somebody's like, oh my goodness, God cursed the land. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, this is an opportunity because bad things happen all over the world. Maybe you don't know this, but some of the places that we've worked and uh, some of the places that Venue Church funds, uh, a percentage of what we give goes overseas to help people in crisis and, and in our country and in our own city. And so what I want to say is there are people who wake up every day with a worse crisis than you're ever going to face in your entire life. So, so yes, they lose people, but yes, they might lose their kids today and every day. And their daughters might be, are, are you feeling me? And they, and they don't have food and they don't know what to do. And and so you have to put this into a bit of perspective here that God is calling, I believe God is calling our nation to something and I think he's calling us to repent. 
Malachi, the, the old the prophet. This was you have to know that that God was giving His people in this in this passage one last chance. And after this word was spoken and not applied, there was 400 years of radio silence from God. There were no prophets. There was no voice of the prophet in the land of Israel. And God is saying something that here, I think that he's saying this to you because we still have time to repent as a people. We still have time to repent as a nation. God says, I am the Lord and I do not change. That is why you descendants of Jacob are not already destroyed. He said, ever since the days of your ancestors, you've scorned my decrees and failed to obey them. When was the last time you really cared about what God thought about what you were doing with your life? When did you really care about your father in heaven? He says, now return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of heaven's army. So what he's saying here is like, it's no good getting mad at me. I never went anywhere. I do not change. He's like, I didn't go anywhere, but you went somewhere. He's saying, come back and then I can. But see, God is not, um, he'll never enable you. So he's a good father, which means that he'll, he'll let you suffer the consequences of your choice. He's not going to take that away from you. But you have a choice right now. You have a choice right now to make a decision. And then it says what we would say, but you ask, how can we return when we've never gone away? And then my Bible says, and God said, ugh. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. If I was God, that's why I'd be like, oh my goodness, are, we, are these people flipping kidding me right now? <laughs> I go, oh, are you guys... You're mad at me because you thought that I left? I didn't leave anywhere. I, I was here the whole time. I was waiting for you to come back to me. But I'm not going to follow you. I mean, the, the prodigal son story, right? I mean, the prodigal son is living with the pigs. You'll notice that the father didn't want to live with the pigs. And he's like, if you want to, go ahead and live with a bunch of pigs if that's what you want to do. But he was waiting at the end of the driveway for his son to come home. He was waiting for the end of the driveway. I just love that part. All right. My Bible doesn't actually say that. I just made that up. All right. Then he says this, should people cheat God? Yeah, you have cheated me. But we say, what do you mean? When did we ever cheat you, God? And he says, you've cheated me of the tithes and offerings due to me. So that's speaking of, um, of a principle uh, called giving and generosity, which I'm talking a little bit today about sowing and famine. But what that is, is um, the tithe was the first tenth of our income, our family tithes to God through our local church. We believe that the local church is the hope of the world. Um, but it's, it's cheating God of the first fruits. Listen, God says, if, if I bless you with all of these things, return a portion to me so that I can continue blessing you. So he's saying, invest it back with me. And I, it's like me saying to my daughters, look, if you give this portion to me, I will make sure that you never run out of bread. No matter what happens, I will make sure of it. And then my daughters look at me and are like, and what do you want from me now? And I'm like, I don't need your nickels. You need to give it. You, and not just that, I mean your time. I mean, how many people have so much time right now? Are you going to learn how to help other people finally? You keep telling yourself, well, if I wasn't so busy, then I would. You know, if I wasn't so busy, then I would get involved in church. And if I wasn't so busy, you're welcome. Look, I didn't cause the, uh, the coronavirus. I feel like a group of introverts maybe did. Because now they get to self-isolate, which is what they were secretly hoping for all along. Um, am I even allowed to joke about that? Anybody, an introvert out there, you're sitting at home right now. You're not sure if you're allowed to chat or not on the, and say anything because then somebody would know who you are. Um, anyways, that was, I feel like that joke was in a bit of bad taste, but it was funny. I was going to start the whole thing with that to get everybody loose, but now I'm talking about repentance. All right. <laughs> then it says this. Um, then it says this. Very interesting. It says, you are under a curse for the whole nation has been cheating me. Now, this is not the time for you to look at God and be like, you curse me. God's like, no, 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 no. Your own selfish ways did it. No, no, this has nothing to do with me. I was wanting to bless you. I told you how to do it, and then you didn't want to do it. And then, and listen, sometimes church people are, are the most stingy people on earth. They just drive me crazy sometimes. No offense. <laughs> listen, we've all left God in our own way. Even your pastor. This is a time when I'm like, I'm going to set some things right. I'm going to set the record straight on some things. I'm going to get some things out of my life that shouldn't be there anymore. He says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. He's saying something about this. Listen, nation of Canada, I cared about your house, but why didn't you care about my house? If you'd have cared about my house, I could do for your house. I could, I could turn things around. And listen, how much money you have is not the most important thing right now. The state of your soul is the most important thing. 
You want to talk about an eternal thing that could happen right now in the state of the lives of your children. You tell yourself, I love my children more than anything. Family is more important to me than anything. Have you not wrestled with the question of the afterlife and connection with God? You've got to quit lying to yourself and telling yourself, I care so much about the people around me. You are here to connect with God and people. (laughs) And if you don't have a connection with God and you don't pass that along to your children, you haven't wrestled with the hard issues of faith because you never had to before now. You gotta quit telling yourself that you love people. No, you love people if you do what's right by them. And I think what's right by them is what's right by God. And it's time to start wrestling with this. He says, if you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have room enough to take it in. And then he says, in the only place in the Bible that says this, he says, try it. Put me to the test. You're not supposed to test God about anything else. But this, he says, try it. He says, your crops will be, you ready for the promise? Here's the deal. The promise is conditional on the seed you sow. The harvest is conditional on whether you can sow right now. Whether you can revamp your entire life and start helping people the way that you say you've been helping people all along. To revamp your finances, to revamp your time, to revamp your energy, to revamp, revamp, hit a reset. Give the first of it back to the Lord your God. Give Give it back. It says, your crops will be abundant. Now, how many people know that the economy down here can't stop your crops from being abundant if God says your crops are going to grow? He says, I will guard them from insects and disease. I will guard them. And you're like, I'll guard them. God, thanks. I'm really good with money. And God's like, how are we doing now? God's like, you'd rather you do it than me do it? And he says, your grapes will not fall from the vine before they're ripe. I'm speaking to somebody in your investments right now. Says the Lord of heaven's army. He says, then all nations will call you blessed, for your land will be such a delight, says the Lord of heaven's army. I feel like the delight of life has been stripped away in a matter of weeks, and I feel like the joy of the Lord needs to be your strength right now. I don't mean happiness and my circumstance is all working out. No, no, no. Happiness is like 10% circumstantial. There's a happiness inside of you that God can flick if you get your heart right with God. He can, he can bring joy into your life when everything around you is going to hell. That's what it feels like, but God can bring joy to you. I, I want to just do something and just take a minute to do it. I think it's very important that we do this right now. Would you join me wherever you are? And I want to, this will sound funny, I want to put on big boy pants right now. And, um, and I, I want to... I want to do this for my city. I want you to do it for whatever city or town that you live in for whatever country you're from. I want you to do this. I want you to join me and repent on behalf of your people. I want you to take responsibility for their sins. You're like, I'm only responsible for my sins. That's not how Jesus saw it. Jesus took responsibility for your sins. I want you to repent on behalf of your people. It's, you cannot say, hey, I'm doing everything right, and if this happens to somebody else, my neighbor, I don't care about them. No, no, no. It's not us and them. It's all us. Yeah. And when any of God's children are hurting, we're all hurting. Yeah. And it's time that we actually started living like that and breathing that and the care and compassion of Christ. He came for the least of us and he came for every one of us. So join me as I pray. Heavenly Father, I, we want our country and we want our city and we want our family to come back to the Lord our God. We repent of making a God of wealth. Oh, God, in the province we're from, Alberta, we have been wealthy for a long time. And then we got arrogant. I'm just being honest. We got arrogant, and we thought that we didn't need you anymore, and we bought a nicer truck and a bigger house, and we thought it was going to go on forever, and it's not, and we're sorry. God, I pray that every person would repent on the particular sins of their city and the particular sins of their country, oh, Lord God. For our country, too, I just feel by the Holy Spirit right now that, Father, we we don't recognize the, the kingdom of God we don't recognize the, the lordship of Jesus Christ. We, we have a queen, but she's a long ways away, and Canada anoints no kings. And God, I pray that we would anoint you as king once again of our country. It started with you, Father, but we never learned to follow you. And God, we're sorry for that. We're sorry that we have hated leadership and spiritual leadership when we shouldn't have, Lord. We repent of our sins, Lord. We repent of the sins of lust and pride, the sins of self-righteousness and lying. We looked at the nations of the world, and we thought because we had so much that we were better than they were, and we're sorry. We were not better than they were, Father. You just blessed us. 
and we didn't return the blessing to you, and we didn't say thank you, and we're sorry for the ungratefulness in our hearts. God, if you would turn this thing around, never again in our lifetime will we allow this to happen, where our hearts forget the Lord our God. I don't know what the economy is going to do, Father, but I'm making a vow in my family. We will not forget the work of the Lord God in saving our souls. We will be grateful for what we have. We will find compassion and we will find satisfaction in this time, oh God. But we will find generosity and we will sow in the land of famine and we will sow into our nation and our, to our country. This family, our family, the Cope family will not be about our, our family, Lord God. We will be about the families of those around us. We will give and we will be generous and we will share. God, forgive us in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Here's the promise from God. In, uh, was that good? Yeah. Man, that felt good. I think it's been a long time coming. I think it's been a long time coming. Second Chronicles, God says this, and he's saying it to you right now. Wherever you are, he's saying, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then he says, I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins and restore their land, and I want to say to you on behalf of God, your heavenly Father, if you prayed that prayer and you were confessing your sin and you were confessing it before God and before people, you are forgiven from Lord, the Lord God. It's a fresh start. And God is going to start pouring out, opening the windows of heaven and start pouring out now. You need to be ready to invest when it's time to invest. And I don't mean just invest so that you can get more. Oh my goodness, no. Invest so that God can restore our country and our land to him and our hearts to him. I see this crisis as the greatest opportunity that... that this generation has ever had. I'm finding that we don't have the template emotionally or psychologically to deal with crisis because when have we had a crisis? I feel like uh, maybe because we haven't had natural crisis that a lot of people have in the world, um, we, we got a little bit dramatic and we started making our own Facebook, I'm just saying. But listen, we have no template. Um, now is the perfect time to create a template for how we actually deal with tragedy and how not to blow it up and cause more damage than needs to happen right now. But we have to learn how to listen to the Lord our God. Now is the perfect time to make life changes. I believe, listen, the worst hell of my life, I look back and I count as the greatest blessing now. Because I had an opportunity to repent and I had an opportunity to find a God that I didn't know. I knew God, but I only knew pieces of him. I didn't know him in the valley of the shadow of death. I didn't know that there was a God down there. I didn't know that there was a God beyond all question and beyond all emotion and beyond all pain. I didn't know that there was a man of sorrows who was acquainted with grief. I didn't know that there was a God of the cross because there was a God of the resurrection. I think some of us need to learn Jesus as he was crucified. And we need to be willing to sacrifice for the people around us right now. Would you join me to make this the best day of your life? To look back to today and say, we started the change then. We said we were sorry. We owned it. We owned my life. And we are going to move forward and look back to this time and say, this was the greatest blessing of my life. Everything changed after today. Here's, I got some personal challenges for you. Just my pastor's heart to you right now. Listen, some of y'all need to go home and have a repentance party. Make it fun. It's not going to be fun. Make it fun. I'm telling you, hit a reset on your morality. Hit a reset on your life. The stuff you've been watching, the stuff you've been doing has not been pleasing to the Lord your God. It's been hurting you. But you could get by with it, but you can't get by with it anymore because that's all that you're going to have right now. And you need the Lord your God and you need his voice. Listen, eat a popsicle for every sin that you confess right now. Because my other point is, here's what else you need to do right now. Have a repentance party. Go home, confess your sins to God for forgiveness, and confess them to somebody else. Confess it right on a check. Get somebody to pray for you right now as you're watching this. Confess your sins to God and confess your sins to each other for healing. Canadians, we are, I'm, if you're from some other country, maybe you get this right. We are terrible at this. We don't confess our sins to each other because we're just too proud. But it says you can't be healed if you won't. Confess your sins to one another that you may be healed. Well, some of us have been like cancer on top of cancer in our lives, and, and the wound has been festering. Well, thank God that this morning he's lanced the wound. He's going to take that poison out of our lives. You're going to get a fresh start. Here's some personal challenges for you. Build some spiritual muscle in this time. You have nothing but time. Read your Bible. Pray. Listen to worship music. Build some spiritual muscle. Look, go to version. 
It's our daily contact. If you're in Venue Church, I mean, just find us on, find us. And that's our daily contact with our people in our small group. Like, read Version Bible app. Start reading through devotionals about times of struggle and crisis. Here's one. Walk more. Canada, you've been blessed with living in an ice-cold country, and ice coldness kills germs. <laughs> Coronavirus can't live outside when it's freezing cold, everybody. I'm just saying, walk more. Get active. Uh, here's some more. Spend more time with your spouse if you're married. Spend, no, nobody wants that. Spend more time with your spouse. Spend more time with your kids. Spend more time, I mean good quality time with your spouse, everybody. You know what? You got nothing but time now. I'm telling you as a pastor, like, Spend more time. Nine months from now, there's going to be lots of babies. <laughs> My dad was born in 1946. He came from a town of 500 people, and his class had 70 people in it, I think, in 1946. I'll explain that to you later. The war ended in 1945. All right, listen, I'm just telling you, just spiritually, it's spiritual. Connect more with your spouse. Connect more with your kids. Listen to more long and weird stories from your kids. I mean, just, you have time. Engage, engage, engage. Exercise more. Well, I can't go to the gym. Find a way. You know what my dad used to do? My dad, they used to get up at like, you know, 1 a.m. or something and do, I've heard all these stories, so I'm not really. They used to do chin-ups in the barn because they were bored. Find a way. Because they were bored. They were already doing chores that would like kill you and your body, your tiny little weak body. Exercise more. Here's another thing, budget more. Don't panic. Don't jump off the roller coaster budget. You, you can see the need right now. Yeah. Hate the feeling that you were unprepared. Hate it. Yeah. Tell yourself, this will never happen to me again. I'm going to budget. I'm going to save. I'm going to quit spending like it's going out of style. All right. Here is what I see happening right now in the world. Here's what I see happening for you right now. If, you know, you know every pastor, I mean, for years and years and years, every pastor has been trying to compete trying to connect you with God versus your connection with your insane lifestyles and hockey and dance and activities and poetry clubs, if that's a thing. And <laughs> everything we've been trying for years to be like, simplify, simplify, simplify. Well, <laughs> the only trouble is we can't get you to a church building because <laughs> that was what we wanted you to do instead. But we're going to virtually connect everything right now. Listen, I feel like this is the best opportunity Canada has ever had to hit a reset on the soul of the people and return to the Lord our God. I don't know where you're from. I don't think there's been a better time. Listen, if we get this virtual connection right, when we come back together, we have this tool bag and we have that tool bag and people get it everywhere and they get connected with God and with people. Every, I mean real connection with people. We can use this, the train tracks of the internet and actually put a train on there that honors God. Yes. Not this like, I'm kind of connecting with people on Facebook. I mean, connecting, connecting with people. Yes. Virtual small groups, I'm telling you. It's incredible. The devil in this time is going to lose his ability to outrun our offense. Yes. Would you donate something? Would you give of your resources in this time? Would you give of your time? Would you join a team? Would you we need your help to be able to reach people where you are and where you're not. I mean, if we could pull together, this could be the greatest time of Christianity, particularly in our country, than we have ever seen. I'm telling you. Here's, here's the possibilities. You have a cousin in Chicago? Get him in your virtual small group. Why not? We never did it before because we never thought we had to. Now we have to. But we could. We actually could. There's somebody that you've been worried about the state of their family for so long, pull them into your virtual small group. You can click a link right now wherever you're watching this. Get them into your virtual small group. We can have as big small groups as we want. I mean, we're just starting with what we've got and, and making them virtual right now. And so, but listen, we want to be able to care for you spiritually wherever you are right now. There's virtual kids that we're going to start offering, I think at about 10 o'clock on Mountain. What's that thing called that I, I thought it was Mountain Standard Time? Daylight. Mountain Daylight Time. Why would they change that on me? Has that always been a thing? Yes. Oh, my bad. All right. Venue kids are going to have an experience every weekday at 10 a.m. You're welcome, moms. We don't want you to... 
Murder your kids. We don't. And if you're with them a lot, I know. We have small kids, too. If you single people, you're judging us. You don't even know, so shut up. All right. Okay, venue virtual service times. Here's what we're going to do. Sundays, this is all mountain daylight time. Sundays, 930 and 11 a.m., we're having venue virtual inter interactive experiences. Just go to the website, venuechurch.ca. Wednesdays at 7, Saturdays at 6. For all you down Easterners, you're welcome. Yep. All right. Good? Yeah, I thought that was amazing. Hey, you couldn't invite your friends from Spain to your church, and now you can. Interact with them online as we're doing. They're going to they're gonna respond like a live worship experience. It's going to be incredible. All right. Um, Pastor Aaron, would you come up here? Are you, are you here in the studio? All I can see are the blinding lights right now. Be careful that you're two meters away from everybody. All right. Yeah, come on up, worship team. I want to pray for you right now. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Thank you to our teams here. Uh, you're incredible. I don't even know all the technological things that are happening right now, but they're still happening, and I love you so much. Thank you so much for working around the clock. That's what you're telling me you're doing anyways, but I don't know because I'm not in your house. So you could be gaming the whole time, I suppose, but we went virtual in one week, Venue Church. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you just slap your knee? Okay. Um. I want to just do a blessing from your pastors to you, wherever you are in the world. Hey, if you want to be part of Venue Church right now, just be part of Venue Church. We love you. We care about you. We're going to pray over you. Father, I just pray a blessing on our people right now, and, and uh, we just pray a blessing on our, our people. Why don't you pray a little bit? Go for it. Father, we just uh, we bless every person that's uh, listening right now, everyone that's uh, catching this online, and we, we thank you that uh, you're speaking to us. You're convicting us, you're challenging us, and um, helping us to grow closer to you and to each other in this time. And we are grateful for the opportunity. We are grateful that we can set aside the time to actually invest in the things that matter right now. So help us be wise, help us to um, lean in to you, to take your spirit of faith and to have um, your peace in our lives right now in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey. I'm feeling, as, as Pastor Aaron was praying, I'm feeling you see famine, but God sees harvest. You see something hard, and God's like, I am going to turn this thing around, and I'm going to turn and bless you. I'm going to bless your nation, wherever you're from. I'm going to bless your family. I'm going to bless you. Remember the book of Job? It felt like things were getting stripped away from him and the things that he loved and cared about the most. But I'll tell you, when God returns it, he returns it with a blessing. And so you need to hold on, and you need to hit the reset button. But God, you see famine, and God's like, oh, it's just for a time. It's just for a time. It's just for a time. And then God's going to return to us as we return to him. Numbers chapter 6 says this, the Lord bless you. I want to I leave you with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. For, for people here, I, I'm just going to do this right now. For people watching or listening if you've never met Jesus or it's time you came back to the house of God, you know that it is. Would you pray this prayer after me? Heavenly Father, I'm sorry that I left the house of God. Or I'm sorry I've never been in the house of God before. But I realize my entire life has been, has been lived around me and my sins are coming over my head. I need you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all of them. I need a new start today. I need to make Jesus Lord of my life. Lord Jesus, would you come and forgive me from all my sins? Would you show me the new way of life? The, the first part of my life didn't belong to you. The last part of my life didn't belong to you. But the rest of it belongs to you. I'm making this promise to serve you the rest of my life. All the days of my life, I pray, oh God, that I would be found in the house of God forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give it up for everybody who just made that decision right now. Please click. Click on the thing. I was looking at it yesterday. Click on whatever the thing is there, and we'll connect with you and tell you what to do next. Um, let's sow in times of famine. We're just going to take up an online offering right now. Thank you for your generosity. Listen, we have a little extra right now, and we're going to sow it 
as a church. We're going to sow it in time right. of need. Thank you for being generous. And if you want to help us from afar, you don't have to. We did this for free, of course. But we want you to be able to be blessed. Like Venue Church is going to be blessed because we're going to give in a time of famine. We're going to sow in a time of famine into our nation, into the nations of the world. So there's offerings. I think they're going to put a, a, a slide on the screen to show you the different ways to do that. You can go to info. Or you can go to venuechurch.ca. Everything is there too. We want to give you the option to do that. If you're, uh, if this is your home and your uh, your church family, thank you for giving and having the faith to do this and uh, having the faith to let God do then what God can do. And I believe that He's going to do something for your life. Um, now is the time. Uh, listen, if if you're in Airdrie or wherever you are, you can actually you're asking what's next. How would I get involved next in in Venue Church? Wherever you are, it's time. You got nothing but time right now. Um, people will show you how to link to NXT. It's our next steps at church. Hey, how do I go further with Christ? How do I? What do I do next? You know, and we'd love to be able to connect you there. Last but not least. We're going to do a care corner. We normally have a care corner in our live worship experiences, but we got it online for you right there. If you need prayer, just click on the whatever button is there and get prayed for, and somebody will join you as soon as they can and pray for you, pray over your life, and pray protection for you right now. And, and please, 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 please admit you need help, and don't be general about it. Be specific. You couldn't shock us with your life, I'm telling you. We love you. We love people. And there's nothing you can do or say that will make us hate you because Jesus loves you. He loved us and forgave us. We're going to love you. And we're just going to help you in any way that we can. Uh, and our prayer team is, is standing by. All right. We love you. We, we're praying for you. And we'll see you at the uh, venue of virtual groups this week. Get your kids into that thing that's happening and get your kids into online venue kids so they can connect with God and connect with people. And our virtu uh, virtual experiences, just, hey, you need encouragement in your life. Just jump on a bunch of these during the yeah. week um, if you want to. And join a team wherever you are and help us to bring the hope of Jesus to people. We're going to sing a song called Peace Be Still. And I think we, I picked it for you because I think you need it right now. And God wants to speak something to you by his Holy Spirit. All right, let's go.
unstable, you are stable. When we've been unfaithful, you are faithful. We lift our eyes to heaven. Come on now, you've got to preach your way out of fear and into faith. Nobody can do this for you. you got to preach your way from fear to faith. If you are with him, fear has to go. going to give you back the land. Come on. Be strong and of good courage. We will see you at venue groups this week, and we will see you at our next virtual experience. We love you. May God's face shine upon you today. And I just want to feel liberated out.